very well I see the room is full yeah um, was in Dean I want to acknowledge you I want to acknowledge David Bunei who we have met and team and um, all of you good people including the Dean of Students and the students meeting this morning and, and the director ICT uh, oh Dwar, how are you yeah and the team, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were very, the director ICT was very keen that I attended this meeting. He said it's very important and strategic, yeah. <laughs> so I had to juggle quite a few things uh, this morning uh, to ensure that I come in, yeah. Um, so I, I want to welcome all the guests who are here, and in particular from Olako Academy and uh, acknowledge that country director uh, as, as well as all, all the other universities that are represented here. This morning I'm told there are several universities represented here. Uh, Chairman Architect Jero, isn't it? Uh, here, Jomo Kenyatta is here, Kenyatta University. We are here, eh? So welcome here. Mm. The, the University of Nairobi and I think that's why I was invited to be here. Uh, and the Oracle uh, Academy have a very uh, vibrant uh, partnership, which is uh, aimed or is, is designed to promote industry and academia linkage. And this training is one of those uh, outputs of this partnership. I note uh, with the uh, great appreciation that Oracle Academy and the Faculty of Beauty, Environment and Design and uh, the leadership of uh, both the Dean and the Chair of the Department have organized this important workshop to impact skills uh, that uh, will be necessary in the construction management as well as quality surveying, engineering and the beauty environment. You remember very well that uh, when we had the COVID-19, that is in March 2020, uh, there were those who actually were telling me that uh, watch I COVID yede kwanza. So in the meantime, they go home until COVID kienda di watakuja kufudisha na wadavunzi watakuja ziku hiyo. So we, we said no. Uh, given the, the ICT infrastructure we had um, and working with our partners, we said we must continue with the teaching and learning. And uh, we, that helped us to ensure that we keep the university alive. Because the university without students and lecturers interacting, that's not a university. Yeah. There will be some buildings, beautiful buildings. Yeah. Um, and then finally, people will forget about those buildings and maybe use them for shops. I think even, uh, I don't know, I haven't been to Intercontinental. Yeah. Somebody said it is now shops or something. Yeah. <laughs> At offices. <laughs> so, <laughs> so even a building like this, if you don't have students, you can just translate to that kind of a thing very easily. So we said no. And, but I remember that uh, uh, you were not Dean then, yeah. Professor Sajirila uh, Kosanjo. But the engineering and the architect and all that, they were a little reluctant, yeah. yeah. They took us quite a bit of uh, prodding, yeah, <laughs> to have them on board, yeah. And, and uh, soon after, they actually did, yeah. And I think they now, when they look back, they see it's a good decision they took, isn't it? Yeah. In this digital age, all workers are expected to be tech savvy. As the country develops, engineers and architects uh, will be required to continue handling bigger and bigger and even more complex uh, projects. Yeah. And uh, this training on this uh, software, what you are calling Primavera P6 for construction and engineering projects, is therefore come in, in a very timely manner. Yeah. And I believe that it will not be just be training, it will be use, yeah. It will move to using. 
integrating digital technology throughout the construction projects, life cycle, transform business through cost reduction, enhance efficiency, as well as uh, productivity. We all know that there are out there, obviously, everybody sees there are no jobs, but uh, some of the, uh, but there are those who say, because we go to many meetings, that uh, the problem is skills mismatch. Yeah. It's not that uh, there are no jobs, yeah. the skills mismatch. So the University of Nairobi is keen to try to address that, yeah, to ensure that those we, who graduate from here have the appropriate skills. And then we are beginning to think about uh, all this, what we need to do uh, in the curricula and all the training we need, including what we are doing now, and also the issue of uh, developing an appropriate uh, innovation ecosystem uh, in the university. Yeah. So that all these good ideas can be spinned out to be jobs. Yeah. I think I had... Uh, it's last year I was visited by some university leadership. Um, that, that's uh, Denmark uh, Technical University. And they, they, they told me in their university they are having uh, two spin-offs every week here. Yeah. So maybe uh, in those developed world we'll be saying that there is, uh, the jobs are even more limited here because our economy is just opening. But there... They are even today they are spinning more and more and getting more job opportunities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we are doing here, therefore, is very, very uh, important. As future workers, project designers, and construction engineers, you need to have the right skills that match the industry requirements so that you can continue to raise or to raise the abundant opportunities uh, that you continue emerging in the market. This workshop, uh, uh, dubbed Oracle Primavera Skills Workshop for Construction Engineering Project Management, is therefore very, very important in the building capacities for construction and engineering students to gain skills and knowledge on the efficiency and cost effectiveness in the project management by using Primavera P6. All our graduates in engineering and construction should be competent uh, in the application of technology in their daily work. I want to, to state also that uh, as a university, we are all inclusive here yeah, in terms of the gender, both male and female, in introducing them to this uh, uh, learning. I saw actually the last time we were giving awards, uh, most of our... Uh, those who are getting awards from engineering were ladies, yeah. Obviously, we want also, you remember Kenya, you organized another talk on boy child, yeah. <laughs> I don't know whether that is what prompted, <laughs> but uh, we, we must carry everybody along. I think that was the message, isn't it? Yes, that's, uh, that's uh, what we want to do as a university. Uh, the University of Nairobi obviously continue to create that conducive environment for all. Soon we are having a groundbreaking for a very important project that is uh, uh, what we are calling Science and Engineering Complex, where we hope to bring all the STEM subjects into one building. And we try to minimize the silos we have been having, electrical engineer here, ICT here, mathematics there, yeah? uh, physics there. How can we have those people having coffee together? Yeah. So we, that's where we want to take the university. Yeah. So that's mathematician when he's seated here and the person from physics is here and the ICT person is there. Uh, we expect that that way uh, we will be able to get the country to the next level. So we have already gotten support from the government of Kenya and the French government to put up that complex. So soon, um, and even also getting uh, um, the private sector. And we hope that uh, we will also get an opportunity, the private sector also to to, to have some of the activities in that building so that there is completely a transfer of, of skills and knowledge in between and, and we begin to create that university of solving the problems for tomorrow, uh, not the silos that we used to have where we are creating 
just a professor who will be just be baby smoking pipe, yeah. <laughs> and thinking very hard, I was some years back I visited Jagaronian University, it's one of the oldest universities in the world, yeah. They find the professors had rooms where they would smoke pipe and then they sleep in the same room. Just thinking very hard, you know. <laughs> I think now we, we, we must really be ad, um, addressing the problems of today and tomorrow. Some of the, 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 the issues this will be addressing, these sons and engineering complexes, increasing the number of girls, enrolling STEM, and also working with the industry under the same roof, as I've mentioned, and teaching all the related STEM subjects from the same building. And we expect that such an, a, a kind of an ecosystem, the STEM graduates, the STEM graduates will get a limited opportunity for exposure and skills development, increasing their readiness to continue to contribute to the country's growth and professionalism. And this is going to align very well with our uh, uh, this major priority area of growing an appropriate innovation ecosystem in the university. I want to conclude my remarks by challenging all of us in this workshop to be very adventurous and innovative. We need to develop innovations to help the country come up with the simple and affordable housing solutions for our market. If we want to grow faster, innovation as well as uh, developing the appropriate patents will be required. And uh, all of us have to contribute. There's no better place to incubate and invent than in a university environment, as I mentioned about that university. And we know that uh, people like uh, Bill Gates, as well as uh, Mark Zuckerberg, they started their companies when they were still students in a university. So this kind of workshop is beginning to catalyze that kind of thought. And as a community, as a university community, we are ready to go. And all of us, we are ready to go in innovating and providing the appropriate solution for our people so that we can make our people happier. Asante sana and God bless you. <laughs>